The next area of the rules that we are going to cover are the lawyer's duties to the public and the legal system. Here, this portion of the rules makes up about two to four percent of your total NPRE examination. The first rule that I want to touch upon is regarding our voluntary pro bono services. So here the rule says that every lawyer has a professional responsibility to provide legal services to those that are unable to pay. A lawyer should aspire to render at least 50 hours of pro bono public legal services per year. So what does this mean? This means that these rules are encouraging us to provide pro bono legal services, and in fact, encouraging us to provide up to 50 hours a year. However, there is no actual obligation to do so. This is simply um, aspirational in nature. The next rule that I would like to talk about here is serving in legal services organizations. So here the rule says that a lawyer may serve as a director, as an officer, or as a member of legal services organizations, apart from the law firm in which that lawyer is a practicing lawyer, notwithstanding that the organization serves persons having interests adverse to a client of the lawyer. However, the lawyer shall not knowingly participate in a decision or in an action uh, of the organization if participating in this decision or action would be incompatible with the lawyer's obligations to a client under the present conflict of interest rules or when the decision or action would have a material adverse effect on the representation of a client of the organization whose interests are adverse to a client of the lawyer. So what does this mean? Let's turn to our example. Our example says, if an organization wanted to pass a zoning law that would be incompatible with the wishes of a lawyer's client, the lawyer should not participate in that decision. Or if the lawyer's participation in a vote would actually have an adverse effect on the client of the organization, but say it would be beneficial to a client of the lawyer's, then the lawyer should refrain from participating in that matter as well. And then the next rule that I would like to discuss is about law reform activities um, affecting our clients' interests. So here the rule says a lawyer may serve as a director, as an officer, or as a member of an organization involved in the reform of law or its administration, notwithstanding that the reform may affect the interests of a client of the lawyer. So an example of this would be, let's say you are a criminal defense attorney and you frequently find yourself representing clients who get arrested for drunk driving. In other words, you are defending them, right, in these criminal proceedings. However, under this rule, it's saying that you as an attorney can participate in law reform activities that might affect the interests of your client. So let's say that, you know, by day, you are a criminal defense attorney representing people who get pulled over for drunk driving, trying to defend them. But you are involved in law reform because you passionately believe that the legal limit for, uh, you know, drinking and driving should be lowered because you think there is too much drinking and driving that goes on. You can do that. Um, why? And the big reason for this is, and I get tons of questions on this, but the big reason for this is, is because when we have a change in the law, it does not impact people retroactively. It's only going to have an impact prospectively, meaning it's going to be changed in the future. So that means you can still defend your criminal defense clients who got pulled over for drinking and driving and at the same time uh, be part of a law reform group that wants to lower that drunk driving limit, meaning be harder on those people who choose to get behind the wheel and drive after drinking. And that's because even if the limit were lowered, it wouldn't at all affect the clients that you're working with today. And then the last rule that I want to talk about in this subsection says that when the lawyer knows that the interests of a client may be materially benefited by a decision in which the lawyer participates, the lawyer shall disclose this fact but need not identify the client. So turning to our example here, it says a lawyer that specializes in antitrust litigation may be regarded as disqualified from participating in drafting uh, revisions of rules governing that subject. A lawyer is professionally obligated to protect the integrity of the program by making an appropriate disclosure within the organization when the lawyer knows a private client might be materially benefited.
And again, uh, this is a rule we've seen before, or at least kind of a rationale that we've visited before. Um, if you are participating in these types of groups, they should be able to rely on your honesty and integrity um, and basically kind of understand the role in which you are playing. So you should be transparent, even if that means telling this group um, that you have a client whose interests would be effective, uh, affected under the circumstances, but you need not identify your client. And that wraps up this subsection of the rules that we're covering, and we're going to move on to the next part.